Good to have you with us, Yuka. So the global race in artificial intelligence, it continues at pace. An American AI startup has released its latest model. That company is Anthropic and it has just unveiled the latest versions of its AI assistant, Claude. The company says the new models can write computer code by itself and play Pokemon for much longer uh, much longer hours than its predecessors. The startup is backed by Alphabet, Google's parent company, and Amazon, and has also made its coding tool widely available to developers. For more, let's cross now to San Francisco to speak with Mike Krieger, Chief Product Officer at Anthropix. Uh, great to have you with us, Mike. Busy day for you. It's, it, you've just come off your inaugural developer conference, haven't you? Busy day, but great to be with you. So you've just launched the most powerful generative AI model yet for your company. How does it compare and compete with rivals such as ChatGPT? Really at the state of the art, especially when it comes to coding or any uh, hard AI task that could take you know hours rather than just minutes to do. So what we always try to push uh, the frontier when we come to our cloud models and we're launching cloud four today is how good is the model at solving really hard problems, like the ones that are most critical to your business, and how well can it do it, not just over a short period of time, but over hours of work. So your company's vision is to develop powerful AI tools that are safe to use. Now, what kind of safety are we talking about here? Is it to prevent AIs from helping primary school kids make guns or terrorists, terrorists develop biological weapons? Exactly. We really focus on, we, we predefine the kind of harms that we want to make sure that we look out for. And then every time before we release any models, the models go through extensive safety testing. And we did this even with this uh, most recent release, even more thoroughly than we had with any other model. And then any issues that we find, we either patch them or mitigate them in the models, or we uh, add what we call classifiers so to make sure that if they do occur in the models, that those responses aren't shown to people. So it's really a, what we call defense in depth, where at every single layer, we're introducing uh, controls and, uh, and, and safety checks to make sure that these models um, are positive for people. Do these safety features not get in the way uh, of developers then? We really try to tune this. So um, we look very closely at, at the false positive rate, meaning the times where our classifiers think they caught something, but actually it was, a, it was a perfectly fine use. And we try to drive that number down as low as possible. So that's one thing we do. The other thing is when there's a customer that has a legitimate need for a particular uh, feature of the model, we'll do additional vetting with that customer and then potentially allow them to, to use the model uh, without some of those safeguards, but only if we feel very comfortable with that particular customer. Now, Mike, you're also the co-founder of Instagram. Today, social media is rife with AI-generated content, including deepfakes and false information. How can we protect users, particularly young people, from the dangers of AI on social media? I think especially on social media, I think there will sure, or can and, and probably should be a, a greater tendency towards what is real authentic content? So at Instagram, one of the things that we, one of the choices we made early is only allowing photos that were uploaded from your phone rather than the web. And the reason we did that, is we wanted to really focus on authentic expression. Now, it kind of feels like a uh, early days still, that was around 2012. But I think the equivalent today is really uh, if, if platforms can provide more authenticity or verification that something really was produced by a human. It's a hard technical challenge, but a, a one that I think is worthwhile for some is it up to the platforms then to verify those or can your AI model, for instance, help do that? There's been some attempts at this. I saw Google actually publish something where you can upload uh, you know, content and it'll tell you if it thinks that uh, Gemini generated it. I think we should also look at something like that. But ultimately, the platforms will have to play a role as well. Now, OpenAI uh, your rival has just teamed up with uh, Serge Johnny Ive, the designer behind iPhones, to develop AI-powered computers. Does your company, Anthropic, have any plans to work on a physical product like that? I think the physical area is very exciting. The way we've gone about pursuing that is, is much more through partnerships. So with Amazon, who are one of our backers, uh, we partnered with them and, and formed part of Alexa Plus, which is their um, sort of incorporation of, of generative AI technology and hardware. And they have incredible distribution and a huge install base already. So we'll continue to pursue those kinds of partnerships. We're pretty, you know, still a smaller company and a smaller team. So we try to be very focused on where we build in-house and where we partner. Now, competition is heating up. Uh, there's, a, there's increasing tension regarding uh, chip exports and so forth and trade tension in general. How, do, uh, how does the current geopolitical situation play a part and does it get in your way of development for you? 
One thing that we've tried to do is really pursue a, a, what we call a multi-chip strategy where we're um, available and we're doing both training and an inference, meaning uh, serving real user traffic on, on GPUs by NVIDIA, but also TPUs by Google and also Trainium from Amazon. And being multi-chip allows us to, um, one, be as available as we want to be, but also make sure that you know when we're thinking about international uh, politics, we're really being able to keep um, the right controls in place. Large language models are becoming more powerful, uh, which also means they're, be they're becoming uh, hungrier for energy. There's concern over uh, their environmental footprint. There's been, it's been a long time talked about that. What's the best way forward for you now? I think there's a lot of places where we're finding that, especially as we think about international expansion, uh, new data centers are often coupled with new energy projects that can be also green energy projects. I think that flywheel, I think, is the most promising one where, um, especially for training, there's not a lot of reason why those training data centers need to be very close to users. They could be in places where there's more energy access and more energy availability. I think what you'll see in the next few years is large um, infrastructure projects building data centers in places that can have green energy. Well, Mike Krieger, Chief Products Officer at Anthropics, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And that's all from the business desk. Thanks so much for all of that. Yuka Royer there with today's business news.